Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Uh, and regardless uh, where you are watching me from, uh, my name is Vincent. I'm greeting, I bring you greetings from this city of Durban. Durban is in South Africa. I know some of you could watch this at night, some in the morning, some in the afternoon. And uh, of course, some of you could watch this as a different hour, but it doesn't matter as long as you can hear me and hear me very, very clearly. I bring to you, I bring to you the word of God, this wonderful, wonderful moment in the name of Jesus. And I trust that it is going to be a blessing, you know, to your life uh, as even you uh, hear me this wonderful afternoon of course i come uh, to you through the uh, this dynamic uh, medium that god has enabled us to come through and uh, that is the global media uh, that is is basically owned by this uh, wonderful uh, men of god and ministers of the world of god uh, uh, from the us and we are really trusting the lord that you are going to be uh, blessed even as you hear me today i want to talk about a subject that i call the grace dynamics the grace dynamics and it's uh, I, I want to take a verse from the book of john chapter 1 verse 16 uh, where the bible says that and of his fullness we have all received grace for grace and of his fullness we have received grace uh, for grace and somebody now would start thinking and wondering what actually is God's grace and who are candidates or who are supposed to be the recipients of this grace of God? Is it for everybody? Is it for some special people? Is it for unique people? Is it for the um, uh, apostles and uh, pastors and, and prophets? And uh, who, who is it really? Is this grace of God meant for? And you realize that... Uh, the grace of God is meant for everyone that wants to come to the Lord. Anyone who believes. In fact, the Bible says, For we are saved by grace through faith. And this is not of ourselves. It is but the grace of God. So that nobody, you know, can boast. Grace is an equalizer. Grace is an equalizer that makes everyone be equal in the eyes of God. I know uh, there is a, a level at which you can say, but we have elders in the faith. We have people who got born again many years ago. We have people who have been in the ministry for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Uh, does not mean those people are equal with those that got born again yesterday or those are getting born again now? Uh, the truth of the matter is this. There is... Uh, the level of maturity that we get uh, depending on how long we have been in this relationship because this is a relationship journey it is not uh, like a school where you go to graduate we never graduate in the school of God we never we are always students because you thought you know something and tomorrow you hear something that will blow your mind off you know from what you actually thought you knew and you kind of realize actually you didn't know much, you know. So in this school of the Spirit, in the school of this divine school of the Holy Spirit, we never graduate. We are always students. So for everybody that comes to God, they come to God as a, as a, as a soul, as a spirit that is dead, that requires a savior. In what we speak in theology as the depravity of man. You know, you come to God as someone who has nothing to offer. That everything that you get in this place is as a result of God giving you out of himself. Not anything that actually you contribute from yourself. So, it is by the grace in, 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 in this sense that there is nothing that you we could qualify for. Uh, based on where we come from, based on the color of our skin, based on our level of education, there is absolutely nothing we could have brought forward that could, that could have given us some credits in reference to receiving the grace of God. This happened totally as a gift. You know how you can meet someone and you look at them and you see how desperate they are for a shirt. And you know you have 10 shirts in the house 
So you remove what you have and you give them. You are giving them because at this particular moment, they can't help themselves. They are helpless. They are not able to get one for themselves. So they don't qualify for this. They don't have nothing they can contribute in reference to this. This is purely an act of kindness that you're doing. So grace is something that God is giving us because we are unable to do this for ourselves. And what does it encapsulate? It encapsulates life. John says in the very same chapter, uh, if you read from the from 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 its preamble, that uh, in Him was life. I think in verse four, and it says that and this life was the light of men. And then it says, "Light shine in the darkness, but the darkness could not comprehend it." And because this is nothing that darkness can comprehend, then. He had to reveal himself. So somewhere Paul says in Ephesians, I think three or two, he says that and great is the mystery of godliness that God manifested in the in the physical, as in God had to transcend from the invisible realm to the visible realm, became a man subject to everything that man has to go through. Are subject to the three dimension that exist in the in the physical uh, uh, area, you know, uh, 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 and 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 because of that, now uh, he did this for the sake of us understanding, and for him to relate to us, so that when he offers to give us what we can give ourselves, then we will be able to relate in uh, with him in reference to this dimension. Hallelujah! So God has to come as Jesus. And he has to live as a man subject to everything that man is subject to. And, you know, he lives sinless without committing any form of sin. And at the end of the day, he offers himself, he sacrifice, he goes to the cross and dies a very shameless death. Very humiliating death on the cross. And he is doing this for the sake of the love that he has for mankind. And after he does this, then there is an open check for every human being who is in the planet Earth. And elsewhere, I don't know, there could be other planets elsewhere that God has also brought the gospel to through the same death of Jesus. But I, I'm talking about, you know, us who are here in the Earth. It says that anybody who shall believe in him, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, so that anybody who shall believe in him will never perish, but will actually have everlasting life he will have everlasting life this is the life that john says in one and in him was alive and in this life was the light of men but this light is shining in the darkness but the darkness has no comprehension of this you see david also said in the psalms that the entrance of god's word which is the personification of, of of jesus christ the entrance of god's heart uh, god's light the entrance of the word of god in a man's life it brings a light in a, what it means is that there is this kind of light that enters a man and there is a, a particular uh, uh, dimension of illumination of a human mind that there is no any level of education or exposure to the things that happen in the world that can actually bring this kind of enlightenment to the man. Oh, glory to God. That no matter what level of education, whether you are doing uh, PhDs in night of physics or whatever, you know, you may never ever be able to come to this level of knowledge or this level of understanding until you receive the light that only comes through God's word. So David said that entrance of this word of God in a man's heart, which is basically your mind, it brings this level, this form of enlightenment. Oh, glory to Jesus. It brings that level of enlightenment. It brings light and understanding. You know, one of the most difficult things that people uh, fail to get in this world is understanding. See, uh, 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 is it Solomon who said that in your getting, get understanding. After you acquire wisdom and all that, uh, the finality of it is to get understanding. What is understanding? Understanding is knowing how things work. Knowing how things work. It's knowing procedures. It is knowing protocols. It is knowing the application of this and that in reference to whatever whatever uh, 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 
the area of exposure you are for instance there is the way governance works in terms of democracies there is the way governance works in reference to kingdoms those are two different things so if you don't know how a kingdom work and you bring a, a application you know of governance in reference to a democracy but you are in a kingdom many of the times is that you are going to be missing the mark missing the mark you'll be missing uh, what you are actually uh, supposed to do or you do things in futile and you will not see results and you will be thinking that there is a, a problem with this kingdom maybe things don't work properly in this kingdom but the truth of the matter is that there is nothing wrong with the kingdom the problem is that you do not understand the application of kingdom principles so let's go back the grace of god is something that we all received it is the equalizer. The grace is the equalizer. When we, when we talk about grace, there is no senior. Oh my God. There is no senior in reference to grace. You don't have somebody who, 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 who is your senior in reference to grace. No. Because grace is a gift. And the giver uh, gives in reference to the, to the relationships. As in, what makes you a recipient of this grace is the fact is the, is the virtue or the fact that you are a human being and because god died for humanity you qualify by the fact that you are a human i don't know whether grace is extended to animals and inanimate things but i know that grace has been extended to every every living human being no matter how far they might think they have gone in reference to denying god and who he is Hallelujah. So grace is what God has given us that we are not able to give ourselves. This is a dynamic of his kingdom in a, as, as our king that he is able to give us something that we are not able to give us, you know, uh, to give ourselves. It is something that we can't buy. It is something immaterial that we can't even uh, produce. It is something that nobody in this world that is able to give unto us because this is a quality can only emanate out of the spirit of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the living God that humans, human beings are able to access it by the virtue of believing in what he completed on the cross when, when he went there and died for the sake of remission. Of our sins. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. But let me let me explain further what uh, 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 I received uh, as a revelation in this verse 16 of John chapter 1. So uh, the Bible says, Out of his fullness we have received grace for grace. Out of his, his fullness. And now, uh, this is my thinking uh, when we talk about full, we are speaking of volume. We are talking about capacity. We are talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the amount that can be contained in a particular body. So this is volume and volume has dimensions. Hallelujah. So out of the fullness of God. So we have to think about now what is the volume of God? What is the capacity of God to contain and what is actually is it that is containing God? Because uh, we are just images of who he is, but I want to believe there are things that we don't share with God. For instance, his glory. Uh, glory is something that is so divinely God's that he cannot share with us. In fact, that is why scripture says in some places that our God is a jealous God. He can't share his glory with us. So, because God cannot share his glory, uh, if we have glory, then it is shared glory, but it's not absolute glory, uh, because that 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 the, the, the absolution of glory is retained only to the person of God, who we are not, because we are his followers. We are sons. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, out of the inexplicable capacity uh, of God, that's what I call fullness, the what I would call the fullness is the inexplicable. Why inexplicable? Because who can explain the capacity for which God can contain? David said, heaven is your throne. 
and the earth is your footstool so what is actually the capacity of god how much can be contained in our god how much you know is it millions is it billions is it zillions of whatever matter you would be uh, speaking of whatever would be the subject what how much do you think can be contained in god so uh, from definition paul through timothy i think second timothy uh, chapter 6 or is first timothy chapter 6 uh, uh, towards verse 15 16 there the bible says what i call the definition of our god he is the immortal spirit immortal spirit who dwells in an um, an approachable light an approachable light i don't know which light in the universe because you know men are still trying to use science to try and find out which lights are these because these guys always uh, check the bible and they go out there to try and figure out if they can understand god but this is beyond human comprehension so bible tells us that god is the immortal spirit that uh, uh, lives in an approachable light that no man has ever seen or is able to see and bible says to him be glory and power forever and ever now this is the god who manifested in the flesh in the form of jesus hallelujah and in him dwells this light that he can share with us he can share he can give freely to us and to every living creature so out of him now out of this god we have oh zabari klagi zalabadia out of this now god that we can't explain we can't understand we cannot be able even to think about uh it, it he contains inexplicable capacity you know so out of this inexplicable capacity of our god to contain both material and immaterial excellence uh, in reference to grace we can only receive portions of the things that through revelation we believe are contained in this god hallelujah so if we believe in god there is hell and this health has is health beyond measure it is health that goes beyond any virus any disease any mal uh, any malignancies any form of, uh, of 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 you know syndromes then out of that revelation we will receive our healing based on the level of our revelation that is contained in this god oh glory hallelujah so out of this inexplicable capacity we have received what a uh, portions of what we believe is contained in him so out of his fullness we have received grace in stand of grace as in because grace is not just one way because our god is not a, a one-way god our god is not a one-way god not a unilateral god is so dynamic that the moment you might think you have understood him you always find out that actually you didn't <laughs> there is so much in him that you can't know that you can't explain that you can't tell every moment you think i know god there is a portion of him that you you, you that is revealed to you and you realize oh my goodness I never knew. Do you know Job? Hey, Job complained in Job chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 20, chapter 30. Towards the end of the chapter, Job says, I was mumbling about things I had no idea about. I second guessed God's purposes. That is why, as a student of the scripture, when you go to read the book of Job, you don't read Job chapter 1 and you think you have received something. Because whatever you read in Job chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, all the way to chapter 40, are things that Job spoke out of his ignorance of God. Oh, hallelujah. It is things Job spoke without knowledge of who God is. So when you read in chapter 41, when God is comforting him, then Job realizes, I didn't even know the God I was talking about. That is how you realize even people, a lot of times, they speak about things. They, they, they assume God did, but actually God never did those things. God never did those things. And for you to be able to tell the character of God, you have to find the character of God from the life of Jesus. If Jesus didn't do something, then it will tell you this is the character of God. So if Jesus never killed a human being, it would be never the character of God to kill people. So if you read somewhere that God killed people, it is good for you to go back there again and establish the truth that could be hidden there because it is not 
in the character. It is not in the person of God to kill people. Oh, hallelujah. Out of the inexplicable capacity of God to contain both material and immaterial excellence, we receive portions of revelation that we believe is contained in God and that those portions are actually our inheritance because we are sons. Remember John chapter 1 verse 12, to those that believed, he gave them the power to be called the sons. And if the sons know then what is contained in their father, then it will be so easy to receive whatever they believe is contained in the father. We'll continue with this session in the next time. And I pray and I believe that you will be able to dig deeper in the scriptures to actually find out what is it that is contained in your father that is so personal to you that every time you think about it and every time you think about your father, you are assured that you can never be denied this thing. It is not even too much about how, how long you can pray, but how much revelation do you have of what is in con that is containing your daddy and that your daddy has given this as a reality to you and that you will receive this without even any denial my name is vincent may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you may he be gracious unto you and may the lord give you eternal peace thank you so much we'll meet again in the next session in jesus name amen